In my opinion, I think there are three general ways to play TTRPGs. There's online via your computer or phone. There's offline via a convention, a conference, or in your own home. And there is play by post, which is via blog posts like Tumblr or whatnot. And all of them have their benefits and downsides. However, as a TTRPG enjoyer, GM, and player, I have a lot of experience playing online. And I think there are a lot of enjoyable things to playing online for both GMs and players alike. Also, the tools to play online are getting better and better every year. With bots, dice rollers, and blogs that push players and GMs to find new and creative options for everyone at the table. However, there are also those who might worry about TTRPGs online. They might be worried or scared that playing online can be annoying and super frustrating, and I can definitely see that frustration. However, I think there are also strong benefits to playing and GMing online that we need to consider, especially if you're new to the TTRPG scene or want to start running games or playing online. So, as you might have guessed from the title of this video, I'll be talking about six green flags for players and GMs when playing or running RPGs online. However, I'm only one person with so much knowledge. So, I decided to collaborate with another great YouTuber, TrueSight, to tackle this video. So today, we're going to be tackling that very question. However, I think it's best I give a quick primer to playing TTRPGs online especially for folks who are new. However, if you are new and want to skip all this nonsense, then skip to here. Otherwise, stick around. To play online, you'll need these couple of things. Discord, Zoom, or whatever voice and video chat feature that might you have access to. It can be anything or everything. Friends, loved ones, and their folks to play with. A TTRPG in mind, and that could be any TTRPG. It could be a microsystem, it could be D&D 5e, it could be a horror game like Call of Duty or Delta Green, it could be a Pirate by Apocalypse game, it could be anything. As long as you have a TTRPG in mind, you can run it online. Also, you might need a virtual tabletop or dice box to play the game. And I go into depth about bots in this video if you're looking for a definitive list, and I also have a video down below in the description box that talks about virtual tabletops like Roll20 from Dungeon Nude, so definitely check that out as well. So, the first green flag we want to begin with is anonymity and avoiding toxicity. Why? Because when you think of anonymity, you might think it's inherently a bad thing, or even confusing. But I think it's a green flag for both players and GMs. And the first reason is because this anonymity allows for you to protect yourself and share what you want in your TTRPG space online. Some RPG spaces can be more or less toxic, while some are more or less personal. And while we all wish and love the thought of having a group of deeply close friends, family, or loved ones who you play D&D with, that's not the case. Some folks are looking to try out a new system. Some folks want to get a fix for a new group. That means some players in the GM can hold some of themselves and allow for anonymity without having to share more than they need or want. In offline space, you might be forced to feel pressure to share more about yourself than you otherwise want. But in an online space, you don't even need to show your face as long as you know what you're signing up for in your online TTRPG. And this is especially a boon if you want to avoid toxic players or game masters. You can far more easily remove yourself from a toxic situation online. You can block the person on social media and elsewhere and keep it moving. But Talking more about toxicity would be leading you down a whole rabbit hole. So if you want me to discuss that in a future video, let me know down below in the comment section about toxicity and your experiences in the RPG scene. Green flag for online play number two, ambience. Ambience can be a heavy hitter if you're online TTRPG. Why? Well, first off, online TTRPGs have bots and materials that can add on to a virtual experience. For example, if you're trying to create an intense chase scene, you can include things such as music from a bot or integrate it in a virtual tabletop. Roll20 and Foundry, I believe, have music integration. While I personally haven't used them, they are super useful if you want to avoid adding a bot in, say, Discord. Sound effects using a soundboard. In fact, Discord has a soundboard feature that is very new, so I highly recommend you use that. And curated images and videos that match the scenario. In fact, 
there is a virtual tabletop that can do all of that. Alchemy has functionality to include images, videos, and music to help set a scene. Plus, it is super user-friendly and right now gaining traction. This easy integration can make a big darn difference in immersion for players and the GM. Think about it. When you have players on the edge of their seats and attentive, that makes a big darn difference. Number three, a variety of online tools. A great green flag in my personal favorite is that there are a lot of online tools for TTRPGs. And to that extent, there are a lot of ways to integrate them as well. But what do I mean by online tools? That's kind of vague. Well, I define online TTRPG tools into a few subsects. First is safety tools. These are ways to improve game safety and or reduce harm at the table. And I'm not talking inherently physical harm like you're fighting someone physically. That's a, that, that's a bit different. I'm talking about the ways in which we can avoid mostly mentally hurting each other at the table, especially when we're doing with difficult subject matter. These are ways for players and GMs to communicate about the kind of game they want to play and are willing to participate in. An example of this is Session Zero or X Cards. These have built-in features using bots, a VTT, or integration elsewhere. Next is Generation or Creative Tools. These online tools can be what adds flavor or spice to your campaign. They're random generators, tables, blogs, or spreadsheets that can be integrated into your TTRPG. The perfect example of this is Dom John, which is an online website where you can get hundreds of pieces of generator material, worlds. Seriously, check it out. And finally is administrative tools. These are tools that help the actual creation, running, or scheduling of the online game. These tools help to keep your game running, but aren't inherently needed for the actual role-playing part or the mechanics part. Example are Discord bots that help with scheduling, or it can be writing applications or note-taking software like Notion, Google Docs, or Google Spreadsheets. It can be scheduling software websites like Zcal, Doodle, or Google Calendar. And there technically is a miscellaneous pile. It's really anything that doesn't fit within one of these labels that I personally use. This can include blogs, especially during the throes of the OSR, or Discord bots like Music or Ambience, which I mentioned in a previous point. So all of these are great tools to use in online. And yeah, you can certainly mention them in offline play, but many of these tools are made for online play and integrated into virtual tabletops or Discord. But I've been talking a little bit too much. And I did mention earlier this is a collaborative video. So I want TrueSlight slash Jackson to take a hold of the conversation for a little bit since they are an expert on this topic. So without further ado, TrueSight, it's your turn. Thanks for having me on, Blurdy. This is TrueSight here to talk about green flag number four, no physical pressures. Traditional RPGs are played in people's homes. As we all know, TTRPGs are played in loads of spaces from conventions, local game stores, and really all over. However, it's not always easy to make it out to your game's location or to prepare your own space for hosting. A green flag to online TTRPGs that offline doesn't have is not needing to be in a physical table or traveling. With TTRPGs online, you don't have to worry about red flags such as traveling with your special gear and preciously packed minis, dealing with folks who have different hygiene standards, Having the space to host a game is also a big issue, as well as the financial strains such as bringing food, drinks, and other items that you otherwise will not need when playing online. When you play online, you do not have to worry about any of that. Playing and running online require a different set of materials, which arguably can be cheaper than playing offline. This of course depends on you as a person and what you might need for your specific TTRPG, but Consider a $50 physical book you can pass around one person at a time to a $30 digital copy everyone now has access to, or a $12 set of dice to a free virtual dice roller. In most cases, especially for new players, online is the cheaper way to go, assuming of course you already have a computer and internet access. Setting aside the financial aspect, it is often easier for the GM to set up an online session. I can easily spend an hour drawing out a halfway decent wet erase map, but the same map online takes me around 20 minutes. If you like playing with miniatures, you have to track down the right ones and maybe even paint them. But with online games, it takes one minute to find or just make a digital token. In conclusion, online RPGs are a major green flag because you don't have to deal with all the troubles of commuting with people's own in-person concerns, and instead, you get to curate that online.
Not only can the physical pressures of an offline game be taxing, but you may find yourself in a situation where you temporarily or permanently can make it out of the house to play. This brings us to our next and crucially important green flag, accessibility. If you're in a cast, it's going to be way easier to make it to your computer than it is to make it to your LGS or your friend's basement. I'm sure you can think of plenty of other conditions that make mobility an issue, but accessibility in your online game can go beyond the space you're playing in. What if it's time to get on, but you're experiencing some dysphoria about your looks today? You should be able to turn off your camera and proceed in the voice chat. Focal dysphoria? It's all cool. RP in the chat box. I'm sure that most of you have heard of using safety tools like X cards. And if you haven't, you can check out Blurdy's on video on the topic. Online roleplay provides easier avenues for expressing your discomfort without signaling to the whole table. Most virtual tabletops like Roll20 will have a whisper function, or you can always use a direct message on Discord or Zoom. Sometimes a game can get too real, or real life can interrupt your roleplay session. When those times arise, it can be difficult or awkward to get up from the table. It's much easier to type a quick BRB and turn off your camera while you step away to take care of yourself. In fact, taking a break is super important no matter where you're playing. A 15 minute break can be using the restroom, checking your phone, or just decompressing. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but the ability to have one makes a big difference. Remember that you can bring up any concerns in session zero or pregame to be sure what the best accessibility options are for your virtual table. If you're at a green flag table, the GM and other players should be able to accommodate. Thank you, TrueSight, for that insightful information. You're awesome. And point number six is group curation. The internet is a huge place. Likewise, the TTRPG hobby has a lot of folks from all walks of life. That means you can curate your group to your liking. If you want particular kinds of players versus others, then you can totally find that. Or if you want a specific kind of GM, then that's also an option. Here's an example on the GM side of things to start. As a GM, you're running a high level D&D campaign. You want players who are highly competent and familiar with the rules. It also means creating PCs who are mid-maxed since you hope to provide them with a combat heavy game. This kind of group curation helps both the players and GM in theory find a group that works for them. In an offline game at a convention or LFG, it might be a little bit more difficult because you can't choose who comes into the store or who comes into convention. When you're at a table at a convention, you're just kind of stuck there dealing with the people there. And if they're crappy people, then that really sucks. Let's think about this on the player side of things. As a player, you really ended a long campaign. So you're burnt out from your current group. So to try something new, you're looking for a simple dungeon crawling experience. In this case, you each of the GMs asking for an OSR game like Dungeon Crawl Classics. You can clearly tell that the player in question wanted something different, and they weren't getting that from their offline table, so they found a specific group and curated their own game experience. Now, obviously, it'll be difficult if you give yourself very, very specific regulations, and as a GM and player, I highly recommend you don't do that unless you're looking for a professional GM, because a professional GM will be able to curate your experiences to their best ability because it's now at that point a task that's more specialized to someone who should be getting paid for their work. Anyhow, curation can help you avoid players or teams who you don't match with based upon your beliefs or the things you care about. For example, I personally try to avoid old grognards who are too stuck in their ways on particular GMing and playing styles and folks who don't believe, quote unquote, in safety tools. I also don't particularly play with people who are more conservative, and those are the decisions I, as a GM and player, make. That can and might look vastly different from you at the TTRPG table, but it's important that you acknowledge that in online games you can curate your tables for who you want. It's a matter of just how much time you have and also how much energy you have to do it. But what if you're still not convinced? At this point, maybe online games aren't for you, or maybe you just generally prefer offline TTRPGs. And in that case, I'd recommend you check out this video by TrueSight on offline TTRPGs, especially if you want to learn more about how to play offline TTRPGs and some of the green flags you need to look out for both as players and GMs. But otherwise, if you enjoyed this content, feel free to like and subscribe or comment down below in the comment section on whether you prefer offline games or online games. I'm your average everyday queer host, Blurdy Disposition. Hope y'all have an awesome day. Ciao.